This is definitely the question I get asked the most. Frank, is marijuana bad for you? Frank, what do you think about smoking pot? Let's start with a little background. Marijuana is composed of endocannabinoids, affecting the endocannabinoid system, which is a unique communication system in the brain and body that affects many important functions. How a person feels, moves, reacts. The natural chemicals produced in the body that interact within the system are called cannabinoids. They interact with receptors to regulate these important body functions. There are two main receptors, CB1 receptors found in the central nervous system and CB2 receptors found in the peripheral nervous system. Endocannabinoids targeting CB1 receptors might be relieving spinal nerve pain, whereas targeting CB2 receptors may bind to immune cells to signal that your body is experiencing inflammation. The two main cannabinoids in marijuana are THC and CBD, as most of you know, although there are dozens of other minor cannabinoids contained in marijuana. THC, which is tetrahydrocannabinol, is the compound that gets you high and is powerful because it can bind to both the CB1 and CB2 receptors. CBD, cannabidiol, doesn't make you high and is believed to work because it prevents endocannabinoids in your body from being broken down, allowing them to have more of an effect on your body or it possibly binds to a receptor that hasn't been discovered yet. Once these endocannabinoids have carried out their function, enzymes are required for breaking them down. And the two main enzymes responsible are composed of fatty acids. This leads me to believe that the negative effects of marijuana might partially be due to poor nutrition. You have an increased demand of fatty acids in the body when you're smoking marijuana, but if you don't have those fatty acids in the first place, it can make a poor diet even worse. Now, when smoking marijuana, THC overwhelms the endocannabinoid system, interfering with the ability of the natural cannabinoids to do their job, from slowing down a person's reaction time, impairing short-term memory, and affecting judgment. As we can see, there are different structures of the brain that are affected differently, demonstrating quite a wide range of effects that can be experienced from using marijuana. The safety issues are specifically from the THC, which used to be much lower several dozen years ago. We have altered these marijuana plants to contain 20 to 30 times more THC than they used to have. Just like we make certain crops higher yielding and less nutritious, we are able to make marijuana more potent. CBD is not looked at as negatively because it doesn't get you high. It's commonly used to treat epilepsy as well as pain. These products typically have THC removed, being pretty much pure CBD, being used to treat any health issues pertaining to anxiety, pain, and insomnia. Both of these substances, THC and CBD, are used to similarly treat conditions, but THC can help with insomnia, appetite, and muscle spasms, whereas CBD aids depression, inflammation, and mental disorders. The primary concern of marijuana is adolescent exposure, compromising brain development, especially usage in the teens and possibly even early 20s, as the brain has not developed until the mid-20s. Parts of the brain associated with memory, learning, thinking, problem solving, have been impaired in people who started marijuana use early on compared to those that started use in their later teens. But that doesn't include the effects the person exhibits if they are high all day every day. Cognitive function is impaired, slower reaction time, inability to concentrate, increased risk of depression and anxiety. And we all know the stereotype of pot smokers is to be a lazy bitch. That has to do with the endocannabinoid system changes, making you less motivated, depressing your emotions. And Frankie boy ain't no lazy bitch. That's probably because I don't smoke marijuana. The tolerance level of marijuana differs drastically from alcohol. Large amounts of alcohol always impair people in a similar capacity, but someone who smokes a lot of marijuana might not be affected, whereas someone else is blasted out of their mind. For smoking, there is a lack of data regarding damage to lungs because marijuana is illegal and measuring dosage is hard 
because it's not something as simple as how many packs of cigarettes do you smoke. Some people might argue that using a bong or vape is better than smoking a blunt, but you are still inhaling smoke and modern conventional wisdom claims smoking is carcinogenic. But we know that there were First Nation Alaskan settlers, uh, for those of you less educated like myself, Eskimos or Inuits, apparently that's an improper term, and these people smoked plenty of tobacco but were absent of lung disease. They did not get lung cancer. This has to do with other lifestyle and environmental factors, including diet and exercise. Marijuana usage has been strongly linked to both psychosis and schizophrenia. But as with the previous context of indigenous Alaskans, I think there are a lot of modern factors such as high EMF, radio frequency environments, and lack of nutrition that make marijuana the tipping point for some of these issues. Most people associate marijuana with better sleep, and although it may help you sleep when you use it occasionally, there have been studies showing sleep disturbances, lower total sleep time, taking longer to fall asleep, less deep REM sleep, chronic marijuana users had poor sleep overall, and the main sleeping issues occurred after stopping usage during a withdrawal period, typically of several weeks where after sleeping patterns return to normal. These withdrawal symptoms were typically strange dreams and difficulty sleeping. Edibles seem to be the preferred route from an administration perspective, but usually the amount of THC and CBD in these products is unclear, and there has been a drastic increase in overdoses in hospitals because of the unlabeled dosage and because of how long it takes for the effect to set in. People end up eating two or three brownies because the first one takes several hours to kick in and shortly afterwards, they are blasted to the moon. Speaking of overdoses, one very important consideration is that people don't die when they overdose on marijuana. When you look at the opioid epidemic in the United States, it becomes pretty clear marijuana is a safe alternative. Not to mention opioids have much worse side effects but as with anything that makes money, there is always a group of people still profiting that are reluctant to change for the betterment of society. As with any drug, abuse is the primary issue. Getting blasted every day smoking pot can be just as detrimental to your life as getting drunk every night. There is certainly the lifestyle consideration, how much it's affecting the things you want to do, you becoming successful. Is your use of marijuana or any drug affecting you ultimately being happy? Then you have the individual subjective ability to deal with the toxic effects of drugs from a genetic, environmental, and nutritional perspective. As I said in my alcohol video, some people get liver failure in their 40s, and some people slam back beers until they are well over 100 years old. So the closer you are to a natural, high-quality lifestyle, the better off you will be. And this leads to the purpose of my YouTube channel, perfecting your health, optimizing every aspect of your lifestyle so you can deal with things such as smoking marijuana, you know, drinking a couple of nights a week. But as with modern problems, we require modern interventions in many cases, and just that we've taken ourselves out of a natural environment, it's amazing how difficult it is to fix the problems associated with doing that. I mean, it's nice to think, oh, let me just go in the woods and eat a natural diet and I'll be healthy. Yes, but there's too many modern factors pulling us towards a modern lifestyle, and it's unfortunate that we can't live how we are intended to as human beings, that we have to go through all this trial and error and understanding of every single little thing uh, in order to thrive. So thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat. Gigantic Wagyu beef sale going on right now, 100% grass-fed Wagyu beef. I have a feeling it's going to be gone in a week or two. So guys, definitely jump on that, frankiesfreerangemeat.com. No one is offering this quality of product, especially at this price point. You can also check out Frankie's Naturals, minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products, frankiesnaturals.com if you want to look like you are wearing makeup. Thanks again for joining me, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.